The arrival of a new horse is always very exciting, no matter what age he is, what colour he is, what breed he is. But it's very important to remember that when they come to a new yard, that you've got to, got to think that it's a strange environment for them to be in. So we must be very, very careful how we deal with them, how we handle them, and make sure that they have lots of time to settle in and get used to and rela relaxed about things. In this program, we'll be using three horses of various different ages. And I want to go through a few basic exercises, both on the flat and jumping, which will hopefully give you a few ideas. Because the most important thing is that we want to start on this road to building the bond and that partnership between you and your new horse. The first horse we're going to see today is an 11-year-old, Jungle Diva Blue, which is a horse that Gubby, um, who's been with me for the last six months, has been offered to ride by Diana Birch, who owns the horse. It only arrived yesterday. I haven't seen the horse at all. Gubby rode the horse one day on trial. So today we're just going to assess, assess him on the flat and find out what his strengths and weaknesses are. So, Gubby, if you just sort of have, have a little trot around. Yeah. The main thing that I would look for with all my horses and a new horse that comes to me is how straight are they? Are they in front of the leg? And how they generally carry themselves and their general attitude to work. So, while Gubby's around, he'll be, he'll be feeling, and, and that's half the secret, feeling what's going on underneath you. So, Gubby, when you're ready, yeah. from the straightness point of view, I would like you to ride in some very straight lines right. away from the side of the school so you can feel what's happening underneath you. So you haven't got the help of the side of the school to keep you straight. And just feel what's going on. Is the horse working in front of the leg? Is he between the hand and the leg, working up from behind? And just just come, start riding on the five metre line from the bottom of the school and just ride very straight. Obviously, a lot of horses can be slightly crooked one way and very often you can feel that in the rain if they're a bit heavier in one rain than the other. And very often people think, well, it's something that's going on in the mouth, but more often than not, it's actually the horse's straightness. It's what's going on behind. So by correcting that, we think we've got to be very aware as riders that we're sitting very, very straight. So, Gubby, just in the straight line, what are you feeling? Yeah, it feels pretty even, actually. He Quite feels very good. even in both reins. Yeah, feels good and in front of the leg as well. Good. I would say that he could just work a touch more forward. Just a touch. No, yeah. And it's important also to, to know you know, how do they respond to the leg? Are they in front of it? If you put the leg on, do you feel they're going to shoot off too quick? I mean, the leg doesn't necessarily mean speed. It means activity and engaging the back end. Now, I would say with him just looking at him, yeah. that, you know, he, 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 he likes to just draw back a little bit. Do you feel that? Yeah. You know, he sucks back a little bit behind the vertical. And, you know, he's a very nice workman-like type of horse. I think, you know, as I said, this is the first time I've, I've seen this horse. And I, would, I like the look of his attitude. He looks as though he's got a nice attitude. Right, now on your straight line, tell me about his straightness. Put your, I'd like you to put your hands so they're touching. Because if your hands are touching, you then have to feel what's going on underneath you. You don't get lulled into doing too much with the rein. So put your hands touching, close, shoulders back, yeah, and ride in a straight line. Does, see whether you feel as though he wants to fall one way or the other. 
and it's surprising how many horses do. Yeah. Um, what are you feeling? It's like it comes into the left. Comes in, falls into the left? Yeah. Right. And then just change the rein again. And it'll be interesting if on the left rein you feel he falls in. Let's come on to the right rein and see whether he falls out or whether he inclined inclined to fall in. But I would, would have thought if he falls in to the left on the left rein, then he's more than likely to fall left on the right rein. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's hard to bring his shoulder around the, the left shoulder around and to the right. So we've got to work on. You know, this is obviously a point we've got to work on. But also, we've got to think as riders, I hope we're not causing that. So it's being very aware, are we sitting straight? So Gubbs, just make sure that when you're working on the straight line, that the left leg is quietly there. So, so that if the horse is falling out on, if the horse is falling out left on the right rein, mm. yeah, what you want to make sure you don't do is try and correct it with the right hand. Likewise, yeah. if your horse is falling in, you don't correct it with, by pulling on the outside rein. So you've got to keep the hands together and make sure you correct it with the leg. Okay, now have a canter and do the same in canter. You know, see what, what the canter's like and what, what, we're, we're, what we're wanting is obviously the self-carriage, that the horse carries himself. Pick up the canter and keep the hand close so you're not tempted to correct it with the, with the hand. Oh, now to me it looks quite onward, <laughs> quite bright. And I would no, say no, that the, sh the shoulder's falling out and the quarters are coming in, yeah? Yeah. So just put him onto a circle in a minute. Because the other thing it looks in the canter... He's is quite he... forward bound and going. He feels quite forward bound and going. And so we've quite... got... He's set on his backside a bit more. Right. Yeah, no. So when you've got a horse that's a little bit onward and a bit keen, and it looks to me, Gubbs, if, if you put your leg on, he's going to get quicker yeah. and stronger. So we've got to do various exercises to try and get him waiting a bit in the canter. So pick up the canter again. Good. And I don't want you to get tight in the arm, yeah? Yeah. But to stay nice and relaxed in the arm. Relax the thigh and knee, because if you tighten through the thigh and knee, the horse will get up tight. It's like that a gymnast trying to do gymnastics in a tight pair of jeans. Good. Now, when he's where you want him, I want you to really relax everything, yeah? If he starts to get quick when you put the leg on, grow very tall. Maybe you might have to do a slight half halt and just say wait, and then if you have to say wait, you then soften wait. and relax again. Okay. I also find he takes the right rein contact more than the left. He or takes the right contact. Yeah, the right contact. More on more this on, left rein. Yeah. So almost, that's probably me trying to overcompensate to turn him rather than my leg getting which, onto him. Which is what I said yeah. earlier. Because the left shoulder falls out slightly, you're wanting to pull him round. Pull him round. So you've got to think, what have I got to do to bring him round without taking the right rein? Even if that means feeling for maybe a touch of left flexion to help you trap his shoulder. So just very slight positioning left, very slight. And again, if he gets quick, just sit up and say, hey, whoa, whoa, and then soften again. Whoa. Whoa and soften again. And then maybe put a transition in to trot. Tall, tall, close the leg, because the horse has got to learn that the leg doesn't necessarily mean speed. Good, and then canter again. Pick up the canter again. Soften the arm, soften the arm. You've got to think, what have I got to do that I don't grab the, left, the, the right rein? And again, as soon as he gets a bit big and open, tall in the body, close the leg and say, hey, wait, come back to me, then soften the arm. 
So whenever you find with your horse that it's getting a bit strong or onward, you might have to say, hey, whoa, you know, come the speed I want to go at. But if ever you have to do that, then you've straight away got to soften again. Because otherwise, Gubs, if you, Gubby, if you hold on too much, then they get to, you know, the horse will get stronger and stronger against you, yeah? Yeah. So it's trying to say, wait, then you relax everything. Good. And canter again. Good. So lots of transitions. Good. Soften the right arm. Good. And trot. Whoa. Whoa. Wait for me. So he's got to wait for you. Good. Soften the arm. Good. And trot. Whoa. Yeah. Wait for me. Then soften the arm. Good. Can you feel the minute you say wait, you know, you might shorten slightly, but the minute you soften again, he'll take Relaxes. the nose out. Yeah and relax. Whereas if you don't allow that softening, he'll get tighter and tighter and tighter. Relax. Good. Tall. Good. Now I want you to, from the side of the school, do one 15 metre circle. You can do it rising yeah. and then what? Then go from, from the edge there, yeah? From, from edge, there, yeah. do yeah. a 15 metre circle yeah. and then do a in rising trot, then do a 10 metre circle in sitting trot. Right, sure. Good. And I want, want you to think of the size. So we're doing a 15 metre circle here, good. And then a 10 metre circle. I'll move slightly out of your way. I'll go in a 10 metre circle. You see, straight away, you've been undisciplined, yeah? yeah? You've got to ride. If I say a 10 metre circle, I mean a 10 metre circle. And it's amazing as riders, if you're slack in your, the way you work on a daily basis, horses get lulled into, well, I mean, for instance, you just did a 12 metre circle, so the horse was naturally slightly falling out, yeah? yeah? So make yourself ride the size of circle you want. No different from if I, okay, 10 metre circle, and the minute you hit the track, I want you to canter. The minute you hit the track. So you've got to prepare early enough. <laughs> yeah, you fell out. But at least you canter when you hit the track, trot. Because then it makes you ride in a disciplined way, without, you know, still staying nice and relaxed, good. Now 15 metre circle. But if you just let your horse go in a wishy-washy shaped circle well, or a wishy-washy straight line, you don't feel, yeah? Watch the right hand. Okay, when you hit the track, I want you to trot. Not before, not after. Tall. Good. Now where there's that pile of mud, the first pile of mud on the side, I want you to walk. <laughs> yeah. Straight away in a dressage test, for instance, he's just lost two marks by not being accurate. But it will make you prepare earlier. So, you know, the horses have got to realise what you're expecting them to do. So you don't suddenly go into walk. So prepare. Think there. Good. And then soften that. Good. Much better, yeah? Yeah. And it's amazing how horses, by riding in a rather casual way, in an undisciplined way, how horses can easily, you know, get lulled into drifting out or doing abrupt transitions because you haven't prepared. So you can save yourself an awful lot of trouble by riding very accurately and very disciplined. So we've worked on the straightness with, with him. He obviously slightly falls out through that left shoulder. Left shoulder. You get, you get a bit tight in the right hand because you try to correct with the right hand, so you've got to work on that. You've got to work on correcting that left shoulder falling out rather than correcting it with the right hand. You've got to get more effective with your left leg. So we've worked on the straightness. Obviously, we've got to work, work on this canter that he sits and waits, that he doesn't think when the leg comes on he gets stronger. So it's sitting. You might have to say wait, then you've got to soften again and allow him to canter underneath you. And we've worked on your discipline yeah. in order to help train the horse. <clears throat>
I'm now riding a young four-year-old. In the case if you have just brought your young four-year-old, I cannot stress enough the importance of safety, that the young horses are very unpredictable. So if you've brought your young horse, it's come to a completely strange new environment. So I really would opt on the side of caution. I personally would always put a neck strap on, simply if it was to buck or do anything naughty, you've got something to grab hold of just to help you rather than feeling you've got to grab hold of the rein, it stops you clinging on to the mouth. So I always ride the young horse in, in a neck strap. I quite like the former snaffle because it helps a little bit with the steering, otherwise everything is very simple. But as I said, with the young horse, you've got to, got to be careful in case, because of the unpredictability of it. Um, with this horse, I've obviously had it a little bit longer, but with your young horse, I think it's very, very important that you're aware that it is young, so it is physically weak. So you, you don't want to expect too much of it. And it's important that the horse straight away learns that you're relaxed, that the environment's a happy, relaxed environment, that you're not in any way at it. In this case, with, with this horse, he's, he's, he's nice and relaxed. But one thing I really like doing, the, the neck strap, I don't just have there as um, something to grab hold of when he's being naughty, but I actually use it the whole time with the young horses. And I, because it, what it does is if I just take a light contact on the rein and grab hold of the neck strap, it makes me, from a young age, start to turn the horse with my legs and they have to learn that the steering comes from where you're sitting and, and your leg position, your leg asking it round. Because with young horses obviously they can be very spooky, they can be unpredictable and the last thing we want is, particularly if they're not very good at turning, is ending up having to turn them with the hand because if the hand comes too much into effect what you end up doing is you pull on the rein to turn and they fall right out through their body. So just as a very simple exercise to start with, I'm just going to trot on, keeping hold of the rein. I'm not going to worry where his outline is because he's a young horse. I'm not going to try and get him stepping up into a grown-up outline. I'm just going to quietly trot round, thinking about his balance, thinking about turning him with, with my legs. So I'll start just a simple exercise, nice wide loops, keeping the, the hand close and on the neck strap. And you'll see he'll vary the rhythm. So I've got to quietly try and say to him, you know, if he gets a bit quick, no, just wait. And I might have to do that by just growing a bit taller, just saying with my arm, no, wait and then soften again. So he, again, I stay nice and relaxed and want him to go in a relaxed manner. He's not strong enough behind yet and most young horses aren't strong enough to take a lot of weight behind. So he will be on his forehand. So even though he's down on, on his front end, I want him still to carry himself, that I'm not supporting him even though he's yes he's too low but I just want him to quietly bend round the leg with my hand close together so the steering doesn't happen from that because I think you can run into so many troubles and so many problems and create so many problems from such an early stage with the young horse by trying to do too much with the hand and not enough with the leg Good boy. So just very quietly with the leg, I'll be making changes of direction. Just trying to, just quietly trying to keep the, the same speed, the same rhythm and steering him round with the leg. Good boy. And I'll turn the other way. So I've got to get, when I, before I turn left, I have to get my left leg on to ask him to come round, then the right leg bring him round. So if I do a figure of eight, so as I come across the middle here, I think right leg, but before anything else, right leg, then left leg bringing round. Same thing, all the time being aware 
that I'm not sitting across him. And then if I want to go in a straight line, keep my hands together and I feel, what do I have to do with the leg to keep him on that straight line? Just shorten my reins up a little bit. And obviously the other thing to remember with a young horse, you've always got to be ready to take that, what I call the safety position, that you don't get in front of them. He, as you can see, he's very wobbly. Because <coughs> at any moment they can trip or stumble or put in a buck or put in a spook. So you've got to be ready to take that, just that slight backward safety position. Good boy. Then I might see what the canter's like. And I know the canter with a young horse isn't going to be particularly balanced and established. So I'm going to try and let him canter at the speed he wants without me having to hold it together too much. So I'm just going to try and sit very still, keep my hand on the neck strap so I don't steer him with the rein. And I might have to use my upper body just to say, hey, whoa, and then soften again. But I don't expect him to be able to collect himself and hold a really short balanced canter because he's too weak at this stage to do that. So before he gets too long and onward, I might just put a transition back to trot. Oh. Try and use my voice. Now I'll shorten the rein up a bit more. Good boy. And I'll try and ask him for another canter transition. Canter. Good. So the same thing. I don't expect this young horse to be able to do a canter transition like a, an old advanced horse. But we could try and get it better by repeating the exercise. Good boy. Sturdy and canter. Good. That was all right. I tipped my body a little bit then, whoa, I've got to try and remember to not tip forward just because I can't get the canter. Ah, ah. Good. So even at this stage, the thing I want is the straightness and him staying in front of the leg. Good boy. Try and get another transition in a minute into canter. Good lad. And canter. Good. That was a lot better, that transition. Good. Good boy. And I've got to feel, the minute he falls out, I've got to get my outside leg on to say, no, don't fall out. Likewise, the minute he falls in, inside leg on to say, no, don't fall in. So the hand really doesn't become too much part of the equation in the straightening because I know that will be my worst enemy. I start saying, pulling with the rein and saying, hey, come on, straighten with the hand. Oh, the rut. Good boy. Good boy. So while I'm trotting around now, because he is... You know, he's a little bit downhill. I'm going to quietly just see what happens. I'm going to keep my hand very still and together. And I'm going to just quietly see trotting around, whether I can just bring him up a touch, which by maybe a little, little with the hand, just tweak up and a little nudge with the leg up and then soften the hand down again. But I don't expect him to at this stage to come up and work in a real advanced outline but at the same time I don't want him to lean on me I don't want to have to carry him along steady 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 good come back to my straight line falling in a bit there so I've got to get my inside leg on oh wobble there good boy So even though I'm not holding the neck strap now, I'm trying to keep my hand very close. Good boy. Have a canter on this run. Good, canter. Good. Because young horses, as much as the older ones, are 
so susceptible to where your weight is. So it's trying to sit very much in balance and it's quite difficult with, with the younger ones to do that, but you've got to do all you can to sit in the middle of the saddle and to stay in balance. And they might yank you down and that's where I've got to try and stay very tall so he can't yank me forward. Good boy. Good boy. And to rut. Whoa. I do actually use my voice a lot with the young ones. Good boy. Steady. Steady. Good boy. So if they spook, I'll come back quietly. I think it's very important you don't get up tight if they have a bit of a spook or a wobble because they feel that tension. Good. Whoa. Okay, so he doesn't like that area. So I'm going to come back to walk because he keeps on having a spook at that end of the school with the car in the way. So I'm not going to make a big deal of it. I just want him to stay nice and relaxed and walk past it. And because he's spooking at that car behind the fence, I'm going to get my inside leg to him and very quietly press his body towards what he's spooking at. Good. Good boy. I'll just go back past it now. Again, try and steer him with my legs. Good. Good boy. It's all right, good boy. It's all right, lots of scary noises and bangs. Good. So just, I still keep asking with this inside leg for him to step past it. But not making a big issue out of it, or not getting him, getting angry with him or any, in any way. I just want him to quietly walk past it. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Very good. And then I'll trot on and see if I can do it in the trot. It's easier to, to come back to a walk, to a pace that you can control if they're upset about something. But they've still got to stay forward in front of the leg. Get my inside leg on soon enough. Good. Good boy. Try the other rein past it. And I still make sure I don't revert to trying to use the hand to correct him or sort out the spookiness. So I know he might spook there, so before I get to that point, I've got to get my inside leg on and start pushing his body to, towards it. Good. Good lad. Very good. And it is, I think, very important to reward the young horses. When they've done what you've asked them to do, you must reward them. Good. And walk. And just in the downward transition with the young horse, you've got to, same thing, take your time over it. Don't try and use the, the hands. So walk and keep the hands soft. So the transition stays, good boy, stays progressive. So just a few little tips, but I think definitely the one that helps me the most is making myself keep the hand very still and not come too focused on the outline of the horse, that they learn to just go in a happy, relaxed, balanced manner. This is a horse called Squirrel, which came out of racing at the end of last year, but he's a horse I want to use today because he's a horse that many of you might be offered a similar horse or have the opportunity to go and purchase a horse because he wasn't expensive and he is a horse that I've taken a chance on by buying but the reason I wanted to use him because he's come out of racing he's had to completely be retrained and educated in a totally different way than what he originally was taught. The problems I find with him which I will show you but I think it's a very common problem and, and and many of you might have similar horses, that he hasn't got great movement, a very expressive trot. But the problems I found with him is that he has been slightly cold and slightly dead to the leg. And I find it very difficult to get him to take a contact. 
and connect up from behind and because of that he rather minces along. So if I initially pick up the trot straight away you'll be able to see the mincy sort of trot stride he has and he does he sits very light in the hand I've got no contact at all and he minces around rather short striding. So what I have to work with him is trying to get him to take a contact and I know he gets short in the neck and sits behind the vertical, sits behind the bit. So there's no point in me offering the hand and get him to take the neck out because he won't because he's not taking a contact. So the first thing I've got to do is try and work on connecting him from the back end to the hand and to start with I will try and get him to work a little bit lower and a little bit rounder and as you can see he he minces along rather quickly so I'll try and just slow the rhythm down and try and get him to step into the rain and I want to try and take equal weight in both hands so I've got the same feeling in both reins thinking of slowing the rhythm but when I slow it he's got to stay up in front of the leg he can't suddenly die and drop behind the leg but you'll see he's quite so you know he's not the happiest in the mouth and that's where he's got to learn to trust the still hand so I will let him go low and then when he's stepping through into the rain from behind then I'll try and get him to take the rain forward and stretch down a bit more to it. Sturdy. Sturdy. So he's got to learn to just push and work from behind into the rain. So now within working low I'm going to just try at, do you see that? I was going to try and do some transitions down into walk but it's not to stop up and drop behind the leg which you saw I only had to think walk and straight away he stopped up on me so I'm going to keep the leg there and take my time over the transition to keep it forward in the downward transition because what he does is he tends to shut down on on you as a rider he drops behind the leg and shuts back on you I just wanted to progressively keep it going forward if I show you a bad one again just shuts down wasn't good hey eh? so you can see all the time good boy so keep the leg, I'm going to keep the leg, hold him in front of it, sturdy. Even if it takes quite a long time to do the transition, but I don't want him just to stop up and drop behind me as I do it. Because I want that back end to stay connected. Whoa. Keep the leg so I'm riding quite good. Even if I hold it on the point of walk with my leg. You see him just trying to drop behind it. So I'll come right back to the point of walk, but I'm gonna keep him on the leg. So I've gotta be ready to give him a kick if I feel him suddenly drop behind it. Good, that was better. Good boy, because that time he stayed in front of the leg the whole way. I'll do that again. So it's almost, well I would call it a dummy transition, that you're kidding the horse that he's gonna walk. So I'll do another one. He's gotta stay there in front of the leg. And then I might ride him forward. So I'm not going to make him necessarily walk just because I slow down a bit. So I keep him thinking, I've gotta train him off my aids. Do another one. Keep the leg, keep the leg. Back to nearly walk, but keep it. Back to nearly walk. Keep the leg. Good. 
I'll let him come up now. I want to raise the pole a bit now, but he's got to stay in the rain. Keep it. Keep it. Ooh. Complaining. That's all right. Good boy. Come on. He finds it difficult. Good. 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 And walk. Good boy. That was better. And with the ones that have raced, you can see he finds it difficult to keep the canter. So the same thing, I've got to keep the leg and he mustn't drop behind it. And like many racehorses, they're not used to having to sort of compact themselves up and collect themselves because they're used to that big open stride. And he's got to learn to rock back and sit because the back end is his engine good boy and then the same thing I'll try and get him to trot and stay in front of the leg so he trots forward whoa good forward forward good then I'm gonna do my walk transition again and see if I can keep him up there in front of it so the leg comes on first good that wasn't too bad good boy but I know every transition I have to make on a horse like this I have to have it where I want it otherwise if you let them get away with the odd sort of time they suddenly drop behind and shudder to a halt then you're not going to ever get to the solution and the answer so every time you're not happy with a transition you have to repeat it right so now I'm going to try working the horse just really forward round the school trying to get it just to step up into both reins so in front of the leg and I don't mind even if it runs a bit but I just want it to get up in front of the leg and step into the contact and hopefully I will get some, the odd bigger stride, but try and keep the hand still, get it to just take something in the rain. Come. That's all right. I don't mind if it breaks. Come. Come. I want to try and keep that contact no matter what happens. Come. Forward. Good. Keep the pull. Keep the pull. Good. Then steady. Keep the rhythm. Good. So another exercise that we could try is maybe uh, keep in front of the leg. Just quietly on the five metre line, I'm going to ask it to step across to the track. Good. And then straight. So it's the very early start to a little bit of leg yielding but if I ask it away from one leg I've got to soften the other leg so from the track I'll step it sideways keep in front of the leg keep in front of the leg good step it sideways to the five meter line then ride it straight not when I'm doing that I don't want him to suddenly balk out through the right shoulder I want him to keep going forward as I'm asking him. Good. Good. Better. <clears throat> and again. Good lad. Now over, but don't run out through the left, through the right shoulder. Good. Good. Good boy. Right, try it on the other round. So when I ask him to step over to the left, I've got to soften the left leg. So I allow him, what I'm asking for one thing, I'm allowing it to happen. Good. Yeah, you can learn to do it. Good. No. Good. Good boy. Good, now over. Good. Better. 
Good boy. Right, I'll do again, once again off the left leg. Away, off the left leg. I'm not going for too much bend. Just want him to step quietly away without shooting out through his right shoulder. Go on. Good. Good. Good boy. Now off the right leg. Good. Good. Keep it coming forward. Then straight. Good. Good. So he's clearly shown that this is, you know, it's difficult work for him. He finds it quite tricky. It's, it, he's a chance I've taken with him, and obviously he was quite a cheap one. But I've sort of shown what he does find difficult, and yes, he's got to do what I ask, but there's no fight about it. And we've, we've had a few, you know, major issues where he said, no, I don't want to do that. I find that difficult. But I didn't get uptight about it. I just quietly tried to ride him through it and just by repeating the exercise until he learnt and started to accept it and started to understand because this is all new stuff to him and it's just little exercises to help try and get him to learn the difference and stepping away from the leg and trying to engage the back end so obviously the connection comes from the back end through to the hand and that's what he's got to learn to do and hopefully over time and continuous work he will gradually get stronger and stronger and when that connection comes through the movement will hopefully come bigger and bigger. The first horse we're going to see today is Gubby's new ride, the 11 year old Jungle Diva Blue. We know the horse has a problem that it is strong so we've got to assess is he strong because he's worried and uptight or is he strong because he's very keen and bold. We kept it very simple. I like to personally keep the bits, you know, as we don't know the horse, we've just got him in a plain, very simple, loose ring, bradoon snaffle and we can go from there, you know, whether we bit him up a bit more but today I'd like to just see how he is in a plain snaffle. Now I've started this morning with building two cross poles. Um, I'll walk the distance. Uh, I've set it on five strides and the idea is that there's enough room that if the horse gets a little bit strong then there's enough room to put a nice smooth circle in if he gets a little bit keen. So Gabby you watch it, I'll show you what the distance is. Okay. So your horse will land. One, two, three, four. One stride. One, two, three, four. Four, two strides. One, two, three, four, three. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a normal five strided distance. But to start with, I'm, I hope you'll put six in because we've got a trot pole there. So if you just come up the, li uh, up the line once, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just trot in, just stay very nicely relaxed, and I don't want you to do anything. We'll just see what the horse does himself. Now I'm hoping as he should, in theory, pop the first cross pole and do a nice six strides because we're coming out of trot. If he does it a couple of times out of trot, just very quietly see what he's going to do. Oh, well he did five. Right, Gubby. That's all right. Now come again. Yeah. Yep. Again, sit very still and see if you can just quietly get the six strides in. So don't push him. It's very easy as riders that you can push too much with the seat. So just stay very balanced and just don't move, don't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Well done. Now I'm going to take the pole away, Gabby and you can canter in. A very good exercise I find as riders, we all get too obsessed sometimes with what, what stride we're on. 
Basically, the idea is to get the good quality canter that the horse can naturally carry itself in balance without us having to do too much. So I don't want you interfering, but a very good way, I think, as riders, is to count each stride the horse takes. You can count it out aloud, Gubbs, yeah? Okay, yeah. I'll just move this pole. Right. Come here. Right, so if okay. you pick, pick up the canter, yeah, and if you find he lands and gets a bit strong, do a circle, a nice smooth circle either around that parallel or the other way. Count the stride. Oh dear. Shorten the rein, do a smooth circle. Look at your fence. Count the stride. I want to hear you count it. One, two, three, four. Good. Right, now do the exercise again. I want you to count out aloud so I can hear you. Okay. Go on, count now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Every stride it takes. Whoa, Sam. Can't hear you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So you can see Whoa. the horse is making up ground all the time. Right, same exercise again, yeah. and put in your circle, yeah? Okay. Nice and smooth. So all Whoa, the time we're just is. trying to think about the rhythm, trying to keep it smooth. Be very careful that you stay as soft as you can with the arm, that you don't pull him. Good. Smooth circle, Whoa. sit up. Keep it smooth. Look at your fence. Keep it smooth. Don't move quite. Good. Whoa. Okay. We'll do the same again, but I'm going to add a, a bounce, yeah? The reason I'm doing this is beca because the exercise, we're, we're having a bounce, it will make the horse just have to think a bit for himself. Gab, same thing. I don't want you to have to do too much. Now just sit still. One, One two, two, three, three four. four. Five, six. six. Lovely. Very good. Very good, yeah? yeah? You had the six nicely then. Yeah, better. We'll put another bounce up now. Because yeah. not only will this make the horse think what he's having to do, it also can really help the horse to improve his technique. He's got to stay sharp, sharp in front, and think what he's doing. I'll do it. I'll just do the same distance again. One, two, three, four. If he lands and hurries, again, I want you to put in a nice smooth circle. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six. Good. I still thought there was too much hand here. Yeah? Uh, there was too much hand here. Yeah? yeah? I want him, I want you to be able to soften the hand here, keep the hand light all the way so the horse has to work out that he's got to back himself off, not you okay. take back, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So again, do the same exercise, keep it smooth. Because we're looking for that nice soft rhythm with the horse being able to relax and look and work out for himself what he's got to do. But that last time, Gubby clearly. Whoa. came onto his hand. Soft hand. One, two, three. Soft hand. Soft, soft. Better. That was better, but I could see that you wanted to go like that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I think maybe I should make the correction off sooner exactly. rather than later. But I just... just think of keeping it all very smooth. I think you could... Just try once and think seven strides. So you've got to close the canter up there, keep the shorter canter. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we had six again. But even though you had six, because you were thinking seven. It came lighter anyway. The six, you had the six easy, yeah? Just yeah. by thinking it in your brain. Okay. Okay, okay. come again. 
This time I'd like you to just put a circle in again. Keep it quite nice and, and short and he's got to carry that canter so it's not too big. Soft hand, good. Smooth circle and come to the bounce. Smooth circle. Look at your fence. Keep it smooth. And remember, don't pull. Keep the hand soft. Soft hand. Soft hand. OK. I'm just going to put them up a bit now. Or I'll, I'll put them straight across, actually. So we've now put the bouncers up, Gubby. The reason I put the bouncers up a bit, because if we were going through that, that was, wasn't too bad. But I would like to see him use his back a little bit more over his fences. Can you feel in the air he's a little bit tight? Yeah. So hopefully, just by putting this bounce up a bit, it will make him use himself a little bit more. Okay. It's important to remember, this exercise, obviously, we're, we're, we're using an older horse here. So you, you might not want to, you know, if you've got a young horse, you certainly wouldn't want to do an exercise like this but you can keep it very simple. So Gabby, come again. Still try and get the nice level six. And again, if he, if he lands and you think he's getting onward, pop in a smooth circle. Because I don't want you to have to use the arm and the hand too much. Just keep a still contact without coming backwards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you had the five there. Yeah. Right. I want you to have six. Whoa. That's all right. Just pop in your circle once. Keep it smooth. Canter. Put in a smooth circle and then come back to it. Soft hand, good. Balance, canter. Keep it smooth. Round, and then soften the arm to him again. Look at your fence. Soft hand, soft hand. Good. That's all right, because he had, he got in a little bit deep there. Yeah. yeah, but he had to think for himself and he had to put in a bit more effort, but that was okay. Once more, try and do it in a straight line. Use your balance. Three, four, soft hand and leg. Good, better. I'm not worried about that, but that was a lot better. Now I'm going to take the middle part away. And you can come on your five to your double, yeah? Yeah. Now we see, having you done that exercise, hopefully the horse has been thinking made to use its brain a bit because now it will be a fairly you know we've seen the horse go down there on six it'll be a fairly long five for the horse now and then he's got to shorten up and respect this because this is a fairly short upright double keeping the hand soft good very good Right, this time you can jump the first rail and I want you to pull up. Pull up. As soon In front as you of the fence? Yeah, after the first, pull up, rein back and then canter to your double. Now, whoa, say whoa, whoa. whoa. Good. Now rein back. Soft hand, pat him. Canter a circle and then jump your double. Good. Good. Look at your fence. Now don't move him. Just stay in that rhythm. Sit. Sit. Try and soften the hand a bit more in the air, yeah? So he's got to learn to... Right, now come on your six. But think as though you're going to pull up because that will make you... Your upper body, come back a little bit. Keep the hands soft. One, two, three. Lovely. Much better. So you can see 
with this exercise. The horse is strong. He does like to rather take charge. And many of you might have a similar, similar horse at home. But it gives you various options to do. Yes, we had to pull the horse up because he was running, getting too onward. But that was really good the last time because the horse got the six strides a lot easier. It certainly helped from pulling up the horse. Sometimes you have to be a little bit cruel to be kind. You know, if the horse is tanking off, you don't want to have a big battle going on. So just by being a little bit sharper once to say, hey, wait for me, then the next time came, it was much smoother. So the exercises really help by the circles or even drastic measure pulling up. But that was, that was good, Gubby. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Right, so we come to our four-year-old, our young horse now, that we've just got. With the young horses, I like to keep it very, very simple. Obviously, the main thing with all our horses is the whole plan is to keep them confident, and they, they want to enjoy jumping. So, because of that, I want to keep it very, very simple. I know for sure that this young horse isn't balanced enough to keep coming and cantering to fences. He hasn't got a balanced enough canter. So I'm just going to keep him as quiet and relaxed as possible. And I'm going to start just by trotting over and, and well, it, I might even walk over a, a, tr a, a, a pole on the ground to start with, just so he can just work out where his feet, I, feet are and what he's doing with his feet. So just in a very relaxed way, I want to just walk over the pole and then when he's done that a few times, I'll, I'll, I'll let him look. He can s stretch down and see what he's, he's going to negotiate. Good boy. So just in a very quiet, relaxed manner, keeping my leg on in front of my leg and he, can, he might touch the pole, let him feel what's happening, let him, let him touch it and learn from his mistakes, even at this age. So right from where I go, I don't want to have to do too much. Good boy. Um, and then I'll come in trot and then we'll add a pole. Same thing. I'm in no great hurry, just in a nice relaxed way. He can carry himself, like on the flat. He might be a bit low in front, but I'll just, in a very relaxed way, he can work out what he's doing. I'll have another trot pole. Good boy. Keeping, trying to keep the same speed. Yeah, good boy. As you could see, he got his legs in a muddle there. So I'm not going to do anything different except let him work it out for himself what he's got to do. Good. Try and keep him straight. Good boy. Gabby, I'll have a third pole. Same distance. He is a bit wobbly, but all I want to think of when he's wobbly is just channeling in between both legs. Good boy. Good lad. Thirdy, good boy. Okay, so once they're doing that in a relaxed way, then we can start bringing in the jumping. So I'm just starting off very small, little trot pole to a cross. And same thing, trying to think about the rhythm. And I know at this stage it's all a bit wobbly and one minute a young horse can trip, the next minute they can look. So all the time you've got to be feeling sort of one step ahead of them and be ready just to sit back in case they do stumble or trip or have a look. And I do think, because of the young horses, sort of, they're unbalanced, I think it's important to go at a speed that you can contain, try and contain that balance. Because if straight away I tried to canter to fences, the chances are I'd run straight past it. So I'm just going to go quietly out of trot and, and see what he does. And, you know, if he hits the fence, he's got to learn and work that out for himself. So I'm not going to help him too much. It's 
steady. Steady. I just want you to go nice and relaxed. Good boy. Good lad. Oh. Good boy. And the same thing. I don't mind if they, you know, as you saw then, he had a little, put his head down, had a bit of a little buck. And, but I don't want to kill that sort of joy that they have because they do want to enjoy it. Now this time I feel as though I could have a bit more leg so he stops up a bit more in front, front of the leg. Good boy. And I gave him a little kick on landing because he lands in a little bit of a sort of heap and doesn't go away from the fence so I want to kick him away from the fence. Come off the other rain once. Now he's got something to look at. Good boy. So I've got to be ready because a couple of horses have come out into the field. He's going to be distracted, so I've got to keep the leg there and try and keep him focused on me. Now I'm going to try. If he lands well and balanced in the, over the first cross, I'm going to try and go on and jump the little double, but I'll land in canter and I'll see if you can keep cantering to the double. Good boy. And again, he was all over the place, which is typical of a green four-year-old, but I just tried to keep steering him, keep pointing him in the right direction, encouraging him with my leg. And hopefully now he's jumped at once, he'll be a little bit straighter. Steady. Good boy. In front of the leg. Oh, good boy. And you can see how unbalanced he is in the, in the canter. I just don't want to have to move up this line. Try and let him just land in canter and work it out for himself. Good boy. Okay, we have the last part of that double up. You can, can see at this age how quick they are to get the hang of things. Like, if you compare the first time when he went up to the double landing canter, it was all wibbly wobbly. Whereas that time, yes, we shortened the distance up a little bit and I could just sit and let him work it out for himself. At this stage, it's very, very difficult with a lot of horses as four-year-olds to, to be able to tell what sort of jump they're gonna have. In this case, Middy, he's, he is weak. He's weak behind. He doesn't give you a great feel over a fence, but I think people can dismiss young horses too quickly. So a lot of the improvement can come just purely from time, strengthening up from that flat work, because I know he's only four, he's not established on the flat. But that will all come with the training and repetition, the gradual physically strengthening up over the years. So that's why I like to just keep it simple at this stage, because I think you could do various exercises but the exercise we saw earlier with the other horse he at this stage is nowhere near ready for that so that's why we're just keeping it very very basic okay that distance is the doubles a little bit short there but We'll see now whether he works out that he may, you know, he found it a bit short. See whether he backs off himself. Right. Okay. He's got to start using his brain a little bit. So, Gabby, what we're trying doing is where the green wings are. We just pop a pole on the ground. 
Yeah? So he has to land over the cross and look a little bit back a bit towards your cross. Yeah, good. So we'll see whether that makes him look down and just work it out for himself a little bit more. Good. Sturdy. Good boy. Again, he made a bit of a, a meal about the pole, but he did actually jump that middle pole. But I'm going to try on my way back to just quietly trot over the brush fence. Do you want to stand one side of the brush? It's very... I think it's very important that you have, I mean you obviously need someone to help you doing fences but particularly with young horses it's very helpful to have someone on the ground because in this case Gubby's going to stand on the right hand side of the fence to act as a wing to help me hold him in because he's not jumped this brush before so he could easily try and run out but at least if I've got, in the ideal world it would be nice to have two people, one on each side. but. Gubby's going to stand that side, so then he's hopefully shutting down the option of the horse running out to the right. So I've just got to watch that he doesn't run out to the left. So again, I'm going to just come quietly and trot in a relaxed way, keep him relaxed. But yes, he's got to stay up in front of the leg and try and keep him straight. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So, summing it up with the young horse, it's just a case of keeping it very simple, very basic. Not killing their joy, like you saw over the brush. You know, he was pleased with himself when he jumped that. He had his little buck. But I did have to be ready just to sit back a bit. And at this stage, he's still very on his forehand. So, again, I've got to use my upper body not to get tipped forward too much and keep working on the technique. So we have our new horse. Now we're going to try some grid work. I think grid work is a wonderful way to see how the horse naturally jumps, how it works it all out. And one of the best things about it is obviously from a rider point of view, all you have to do is sit very, very still and the horse has got to work it out from himself. So as a rider, I'm just going to try and do very, very little apart from just get him to the first trot pole in the right way and from then on he's got to work out what he has to do. It's great for improving a horse's technique. You can have all sorts of of grids you can build up to, you can have bounces in grids, all sorts of things and various things and we'll see how this horse goes. But what I must stress to you is that with your new horse you don't overdo things, take things slowly, start little and see what, how capable he is. Don't suddenly start by putting things up that might worry him. Remember the partnership's new so it is very very important that just get a feel of things, like over a little cross pole to start with. So that's what I'm going to do to begin with. So like I was saying on the flat, it's important that the horse is channeled between both legs. As we saw with this horse, he can get a little bit behind the leg. So I just want him to stay up in front of the leg and really concentrate about keeping him in the middle of the fence, tunnelled between hand and leg. Good boy. A little bit stuffy off the leg to that. I'll come once more. Good boy. So he's got to, all I want him to do is to take me to that first cross pole without me having to work too hard. He's got to carry me there.
Come on, draw me in. That's all right, good. OK, we have, we have a sec second part up now, which we've got on 20 foot. Just a little vertical. I like to keep a ground rail in front of the fence, you know, to help the horse, because with this new partnership, you don't want to try and catch the horse out in any way. You know, make it fairly, fairly simple for him. Good, just, just out in front, yeah. Good boy. So I want to try and sit as still as I can, concentrate on my position and over the fence, keeping him straight, keeping him channeled. Good boy. Right, we're now going to add a third element. Just a vertical gubby to start with. And as we were coming in trot over the trot pole cross, as we were landing from a trot, the first distance we have is a bit shorter, whereas the second one we've put at about 22 feet, which is just a little bit longer because obviously the horse is jumping the second element, be landing that much further out, so we've given him a little bit more room between the second and the third part. I'm actually going to put my stick in the other hand because if anything he's very slightly drifting to the left. Good boy. That time it worked the other way and he very slightly went to the right. Okay, we have a back bar on that Gubby. Just could do with him just drawing me in a little bit more. Good boy. Right, we have a fourth element, which is we've put the fourth part at exactly the same distance between, as we have between the second and third element. That was better that last time. It definitely felt straighter, more tunnelled. He's getting the hang of going in that straight line. And I think it, you have to be very strict at this stage that you do work on. If you want to jump a fence at a certain point, they've got to jump it there and stay straight. Good boy. Now that time, I think he was a little bit shocked. You know, he, he's probably be the first time maybe he's jumped four in a row. So I'm not going to put the fifth one up just yet. But what we will do, Gubby, as he was drifting right, we can just put maybe a pole just to the right-hand side of that last bit to try and help him just keep a little bit straighter. But he might still have a look at it, so I've got to be ready, keep my leg there in case he does have a look. I want him to work it out for himself. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Okay, we have the last part up. Obviously, it does depend on how lucky you are to how many fences you've got at home or how many you can use from a friend or whatever, but in this case, I want to put the last bit up. As you saw from that time, he was lovely relaxed, the jumps were nice, he kept straight, the, the pole to the, the wing on this fourth element stopped him from drifting right, so he was a lot straighter that time and kept his line well and I felt as though he spent nice time in the air over the fences. He's got to draw me in. Come. Good boy. Good boy. Good. 
good. Now, another good, good thing that I find helps a little bit as we've put the wing up here, just gubby over the last part, put some V's up to the last part. Because if you put, yeah, both sides, because it can really help. If you've got a horse that's maybe not as sharp as you would like in front, then to help his technique, yes, you could do a grid with very high crosses. That will help his front end technique. But the other thing that we do a little, quite a bit of is putting V's up. Just keep them far enough away just for the first time, yes. So he's, again, it's brought in gradually. I don't want to put the V actually touching together because he might be a little bit worried, a bit surprised by it. So we'll keep them, if we jump it once like that, Gubby, and then we move them closer and hopefully he'll show a little bit better shape over that last part. Come. Good boy. Good lad. Okay, now we put them, yeah, so they're touching. Come. Come. Good boy. So, I was very happy with that, very pleased with that. How he was in his brain. He was very sensible. Definitely when he started, he was quite wobbly, a um, little bit behind the leg, but then he started to go down very happily, a very relaxed way. And as you saw over the last element, with the help of the Vs, he got better and better with his technique. So you can do all sorts of various exercises, but I would say with your new horse, don't get too technical and don't get too complicated too soon. Just get a feel for what, what they're like, their attitude, and just take things gradually. at Coomlands to the fun bit, introducing your new horse to cross country. I think it's very important when you buy a new horse that you know from the owners exactly what the horse has done, whether it's had cross country experience or it hasn't. Keep it simple. Obviously have your normal good protection, boots on all round. I've kept him in just a snaffle. Body protectors are must, absolute must. Um, you never know when the horse might trip or stumble, particularly as you don't know the horse, but I'd always say whenever you ride cross country, you must wear a body protector. On top of that, the crash helmet, obviously goes without saying. That is very important, the safety side. So with your new horse, you've found out from the, the owner whether it's, had, whether it's done any cross country or not. If it hasn't, I would definitely suggest you always, always have a lead horse or another horse there of some experience that can give your new young horse or the horse that hasn't seen a cross-country fence before a good lead into water and ditches because you want to avoid having a confrontation with your new horse. And why should a horse go straight into water if it's never seen it in its life before? So it's very important to have a lead horse there. If your horse has done a bit more, it's essential to have someone on the ground in case something happens. I would always suggest never go cross-country schooling when you're on your own. So, what, what are we going to do with our new horse cross-country? I like to think of maybe, you know, the whole thing is building up the partnership between you, starting on that bond and, you know, getting, get, getting that partnership together. So. I'll start by just jumping a few little straightforward fences, see what the horse's attitude is like, think about the straightness like we worked on in the show jumping, having the, the horse between the hand and leg, and also staying very much in balance and trying to do as little as possible from a rider point of view. Yes, it's essential you stay in balance with your horse. Never ever get in front of the movement. You're either in the middle, the centre of balance, and you've got to be very quick 
to get shift your weight back if the horse pecks or trips or loses a leg. You're safer off being slightly behind the movement rather than ever getting in front of the movement. So we'll start with our straightforward fences just to start with. Right, I'm now going to pop these four fences and I want to just try and see what he's going to do. Trying to keep them fairly straight between both legs. Take my body back and up in front of the fence. Good. Oh, dabbing him back. We've got to still keep the leg, keep him on the job. Body back again. Back. Good. Now I can go forward and land. Then I'll start to bring my body up again without changing the speed. Good. Again, body up. Good boy. Having done a few island fences, and if you're happy with the way the horse feels, then it's the time maybe to ask a bit more of him. So we're going to try a ditch now. Ditches are funny fences because you never know how a horse is going to jump them. And it's very, very easy to get left behind when you go over a ditch because they can give an awkward jump. And if you do find yourself in that position, that's fine as long as you give the horse the freedom in the neck that when he jumps a ditch, maybe slightly awkwardly, that you don't catch him in the mouth with the rein. I like, with all my horses, to introduce them to the ditch quite quietly and slowly so they have time to see what, you know, what they're about to jump. There's no point in coming too fast because then the horse suddenly gets a shock. So yes, it's important to have him in front of the leg and to keep encouraging, encouraging him quietly forward, but give him time to see what he's got to jump. If the horse is very green over it, keep coming backwards and forwards, like on the flat work, like with the show jumping. Repeat, repeat, until you feel the horse is confident and happy with the exercise you've asked him to do. I'm going to quietly channel him between the leg to the hand, try and keep him straight, let him see the ditch, be ready to slip the rein, let him pop over it. Once again, keep him. you're ready to slip that rein, stay slightly behind, good. So now we'll do it the other way round with the ditch, two strides to a little trochaner. So same principle, stay behind him, keep him channeled between the leg, sit up, stay behind, and he happily jumps it. And then I can come round and do the trochaner just on its own. Trochaners are, any ditches can be rider frighteners. So it's very important as a rider, you don't give send the horses that, those vibes through your body. So same thing, between the leg, sit up and then pop over it. And ride it really as if the ditch isn't there. So it's important that you don't send the vibes to the horse that you're worried that there's a big ditch because they can't see the ditch from back here. Stay behind. Good. Because again, cross country is so much about the horse being confident and enjoying it. So if the horse is green, if it's a bit worried, then just keep repeating until he feels very relaxed and happy about the job he's doing. The combination fence. It's important while you're assessing your new horse to work out you know, is, is he bold? Is he over bold, too bold, or is he the other way and a little bit cautious, a little bit worried, a little bit behind the leg? Now, when you come to the combination fence, to me, the most important thing is your balance and your setup before you get to the fence. Our job as riders is to balance the horse. The horse's job is to jump the, the elements when he gets there. So, with the new horse, I'll be judging how well does he listen when I've Candidate, at you know, some speed across country and then get him back, balanced, so that I have him back where I want him, the pace I want, so then the last two strides I'm then able to put my leg on and say, right, there's the fence. Because where people go wrong is that you can be killing the speed the last two strides, 
still killing the speed, interfering with the horse so that they then don't get a chance to look at the fence and look to see what they're jumping. So it's getting the pace early enough so the last two you can press them at the fence. And then it's assessing them to how they cope with the various different obstacles you have in that combination. In this case, we've obviously got two steps up to a roll top afterwards. <coughs> so again, I'll be thinking about my position and, and the main thing I'll be thinking about is, is my approach. So I've come at some speed, I now bring my body back, shorten up the canter, get my bottom down, wait until my eye clucks in and then allow the last two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. good boy. The water. Obviously one of the main features on any cross-country course, but it's essential that the horse realises that there's nothing to be worried about with water. And it's very good for them. If you can walk in, let them have a little bit of a splash and a play. Because I can assure you, if they're worried about water, then you get the awkward jumps, you get big jumps, or you get horses refusing to go in. Like I said with the ditches, it's very helpful if your horse has never seen water or seen these funny cross-country fences Again, I stress you need another horse to give you a lead because they soon pick it up very easily. So I start little basic walk through, have a splash around, and then when I've done that exercise, then I might trot through. So I just walk him through again once more. And going back to our position, and bearing in mind it is a new horse, I mean, it's pretty relevant whether, whether it's an established partnership or it's a new partnership but same thing when you're doing the water it's very important again to stay a little bit behind them as they pop in because you never know they might just stumble and be ready just to slip the rein to give the horse a little bit of freedom in its neck because I like to think of, of the, the neck being its fifth leg so you've got to be able to just Allow the rein to slip through your fingers to give that ho the horse the freedom because it's his neck that will help him to balance. Okay, it might not show up when you're jumping a little step in, but when the fences come a little bit bigger, they need more freedom. So now he's popped in over the step, I'll jump the tyre, pop through the step, pop down over the step, through the water and up over the house. So it's important here, again, like I said with the body, to stay back in front of the legs, stay back. And a little, whoa, whoa, freedom, sit back. Now I've got to generate forward impulsion and over the house. As I showed there, I was a little bit slow to generate forward impulsion. But I will have to say that if you've let the reins slide through your fingers, you've got to remember to take up the slack. You might not have time to shorten the rein, so you'll probably have to take your arms right back just to take up that slack. So back, keep my body back, little whoa, whoa, I don't want him to jump in too big. Good boy. I think it's very important to Assess how your horse feels to how quickly you're going to progress. Because you don't want to hold the horse back, but at the same time you don't want to frighten him because the cross country, as I said, is all about confidence. He's popping through there nicely. So now I'm going to try just jumping the actual little jump into the water and just let him pop in. So this time I know I might have to sit back a little more and give him a little bit more freedom in that length of rain. I've got to be ready with the leg in case he does back off. Might, might have to come a little bit stronger in. Stay behind. Oh. Good boy. Just do that once again. But it's important to notice how much I slip the rein, how much 
length of rain the horse needs when jumping drop fences and particularly fences into water. I've got to get right behind him here, slip the rein. Good boy. So sit up here, sit up here in balance. Then I'll just start feeding the rein, letting the rein slip, pick up the slack and out. Good boy. So as you can see, just by these little exercises, how, you know, the horse is clearly enjoying himself. And it's amazing how quickly horses can grow in confidence over their cross-country fences. But at the same time, they can lose confidence very easily. We didn't have this problem with this horse, but if you have a horse that jumps in too big into water, it's important that you just practice getting them to just pop quietly off a step because they can f easily frighten themselves by being over big into water. Likewise, if you've got one that's tricky with water, I hate to say it, but you might have to be there all day until you get the horse in because the horse has to realise that you are the boss. If you, you want it to do a job, so you might be there all day.